Hello viewers, my name is Pranav Devan. Welcome to another session from Ceasefire. Today I'm going to take you through impanel tube-based fire suppression system from Ceasefire. This system is also known as CQRS with Ceasefire as Ceasefire Quick Response System, meaning that they respond very quickly and they put out fire in a single step. So let's look at what kind of CQRS system that Ceasefire has. Their broad category of CQRS systems are the direct and the indirect system. To the heart of all systems is the HST or the heat sensing tube. This tube is specially designed to detect fire. This has two ways of functioning. One is when the flame directly touches the HST and the other is when the tube is placed in high ambient temperatures. The tube ruptures at the point where there is heat concentration and the extinguishing agent or the pressurized gas within the HST can come out of this point. The way this tube is used or the functioning of this tube defines the two categories of CQRS. The tube is attached as a pressurized section to the head of the valve. If the tube plays the role of detecting the fire and delivering the extinguishing content to the source of the fire, then we call it a direct system. If the tube plays the role only of detection and the extinguishing agent is sent out through a different port, then it is called the indirect system. Both the direct and the indirect systems are further divided into low pressure and high pressure systems. In low pressure system, we have 15 bar systems where we are using fluoroketone. Fluoroketone is available in 2, 3 and 4 kg sizes which have been certified under LPS 1666. We also have a high pressure system in the direct system where you have CO2 cylinder which is stored uh, pressure of 70 bar that is why it's called a high pressure system and that is why it is also having a valve which can sustain high pressure up to 250 bars. For the indirect system we have low pressure and high pressure again. Okay? In high pressure, we have CO2 cylinder, again with capacities 5 kg, 2 kg and 20 kg. And in low pressure, we have again 2, 4, 6, 9 for powder and 2, 4, 6 and 9 for floor ketone. Certifications are only available for LPH 1666 with floor ketone in 2, 3 and 4 kg. All the cylinders are CE marked and they are PED tested. Now let's look at how the system functions. If we were to look at indirect system, to an indirect system we we'll have a HST attached to its valve head. The other port can extend with another HST length or it can be attached with the HST which ends in the end of line plug. The HST on one end will have at least one end of line adapter. This is the case for both the system direct and indirect. Now, the HST is pressurized with dry nitrogen to 15 bar which equalizes to the pressure which is inside the cylinder where the extinguishing agent is also pressurized at 15 bar with dry nitrogen. In the case of CO2, there is no pressurization as CO2 which is contained within the cylinder as 70 bar can also equalize the pressure in the HST. Now, this is how a low pressure or a high pressure direct system functions. As soon as the heat is detected, a small puncture is created in the HST. As this puncture is created, the agent from the cylinder is forced out by its nitrogen propellant or its self pressure, and the agent comes out of this very port from where the rupture has been created. So, this is the operation of the direct system. Now, this kind of a system is very useful in cases where we have multiple enclosures which we need to protect. There is not one singular enclosure but multiple enclosures and these could be of various sizes. We can handle enclosures up to maximum of 2 meter cube as defined by LPS 1666. Now the advantage with this system is that when you have multiple enclosures and you have HST extending from one enclosure to another enclosure, only the enclosure which has been affected by fire will have the discharge of the agent. In that way, you can minimize or use minimal quantities of agent to put out fire. In the indirect system, there could be two reasons for using the indirect system. Where HST plays the role of detection, but the discharge is through a separate line and nozzles. 
Here, if you have to discharge a large quantity into a singular enclosure, probably more than 2 cubic meter, then it is only possible with an indirect system. The other case could be the change of agent. If you are changing agent from our gas to our uh, powder, then it is only possible with the indirect system. It cannot be discharged through the miniature hole of the HST in the direct system. Another advantage with the indirect system is that you can remotely discharge the cylinder using a manual release, which is not possible in a direct system. Now, let us understand what are the further advantages of valves from C spire. All the valves from C spire have integrated ball valves. That means there are no chances of leakages. Secondly, each ball valve handles all outputs. When that is done, then the number of joints from all the valves is reduced to minimal, which increases the shelf life or the sustainability of the system. So, we are, let's go to our AI center and look at the demonstration of a low pressure system and see how fast it can extinguish. Then we will also see the functioning of an indirect gas based system. So let's go to the AI center. Welcome viewers to AI center. We are ready with the demonstration of ceasefire low pressure in panel view based suppression system. Here we have a fluoroketone fire extinguisher. This is pressurized with dry nitrogen. To the head of this extinguisher we have a special valve with integrated ball valve. The position of the integrated ball valve is also monitored by a reach switch by this panel. I will tell you the functioning of this panel a little later. The HST is pressurized to 15 bar which equalizes to the pressure within the cylinder. This is the underlying adapter where we pressurize the HST. Once the HST has been pressurized to 15 bar, this valve is open and now the cylinder is commissioned. In the inside of the panel, we have HST flowing throughout the panel. This moves in an unobtrusively manner. This will allow the daily working and maintenance of the cylinder without HST coming in its way. The HST comes out and then it ends at one end with another end of line adapter where we can connect a pressure gauge switch. The PGS monitors the pressure within the HST. The PGS also has a switching action which will send a signal to the monitoring panel. The monitoring panel will keep system health in uh, notice and this monitoring panel can be connected with four systems like this. The monitoring panel also has a non-potential output which will help you connect with a uh, fire alarm panel and this uh, module has a very intelligent battery charging system. It can uh, also uh, uh, keep uh, 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 provide you power for your uh, strobe siren. Now for the purpose of the demonstration, we the system is commissioned. We are going to put a fire at this point. We are going to let the fire grow. We will see how the HST bursts and how the agent comes and falls onto the fire and how it spreads within the cabinet. So let's start with the demonstration. Uh, for the purpose of the demonstration, we are pouring out uh, a little amount of heptane with the uh, A-class fuel material and we are going to light it. And I will just step back and let you enjoy the, the demonstration. So as the tube ruptures, there will be a loud burst sound. Charge is complete. Establishment has occurred. You can see the rupture in the tube. And there is no reignition.
So that completes our demonstration of CQRS low pressure in panel tube based suppression system. First, we have just seen the functioning of the low pressure direct system. Let us look at the functioning of the low pressure indirect system. For an indirect system, the HST on the head of the cylinder is again pressurized with dry nitrogen, but this plays the role of keeping the valve closed. It will only detect the fire and open the valve. It does not discharge the extinguishing agent. The extinguishing agent is discharged through a separate steel line which passes the gas into the enclosure and disperses it via nozzles. As in the case of the direct system, the indirect system also has an integrated ball valve whose position can be monitored using a reed switch. The valve lever itself is secured into place with an Allen key nut. So let's go ahead and look at the demonstration of this system. For this, we are going to light a fire inside the enclosure. The HST is going to rupture from the point where the flame touches the HST. The tube is going to depressurize, open the valve and the agent is going to come out through these nozzles. The tube ruptures By this method, singular enclosures of large volumes can be covered. Also, if we are going to use powder instead of gas, the indirect system usage is essential. Thank you so much for joining me for this demonstration.